Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, good morning. Shabbat shalom, Shabbat shalom. What a beautiful and wonderful day, the day that the Lord has made. He created this day to be worshiped, to worship in Him, to love Him. Oh, Father God, we love you, we love you. Oh, Yahweh, oh, Yeshua, we love you, we love you. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Welcome, welcome to the altar of truth service. Ah, yes, it's just a wonderful and glorious day. We're so happy to be here. Thank you for joining us this morning. Oh, and God, oh, my Lord, does he have a word? Oh, does he have a word? Oh, yes, yes, yes. So right now, what I want to do is I want to worship and praise him. I want to worship the King of King and the Lord of Lords. I want to worship the Messiah. I want to give him all the glory and all the honor on this beautiful and wonderful set apart day, the Sabbath day in which he set apart for us to worship and praise him. Wherever you're at, wherever you're at, just give him all the glory and all the honor because he is worthy. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord is my life and my salvation. And whom shall I fear? The Lord is my light and my salvation. And whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. And whom shall I fear? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid? Oceana, Oceana, Oceana. We will sing of your salvation, Oceana, Oceana. We will cry out for your salvation. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid? Oceana, 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 we will sing of your salvation, Oceana, Oceana, Oceana. We'll cry for your salvation. Oh Lord, oh Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bendito sea el nombre del Señor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Gracias, Señor. Gracias que nos, nos has dado este día especial, Señor, para venir a dodarte, a glorificarte, a darte toda la gloria y toda la honra, Señor. Eres digno de toda alabanza, Señor. Te alabamos. Te glorificamos, Señor. Bendito sea tu nombre para siempre. Aleluya. Dios es mi luz y mi salvación. ¿En quién temeré? Dios es mi luz y mi salvación. No hay más temor. Dios es mi luz. Y mi salvación, en quien temeré, Dios es mi luz y mi salvación, no hay más temor, Oceana, Oceana, Oceana. Cantaré de tu salvación, Oceana, Oceana, 
mañana lloraré por tu salvación Dios es mi luz y mi salvación en quien temeré Dios es mi luz y mi salvación ya no hay más temor Oceana 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 Cantaré de tu salvación Oceana 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 Lloraré por tu salvación The Lord is my light And my salvation And whom shall I fear? The Lord is my life and my salvation. And whom shall I Hoshiana, Hoshiana, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. What a powerful and beautiful song. That song just moves my spirit. It moves. The Lord is my light and he's my salvation. Whom shall we fear? Whom shall we fear? No one. For our God, our God is a mighty God. Well, welcome again. This is the altar of truth and this is our service today. My name is Pastor Alex and I'm so happy and so overjoyed and humbled to be here. Thank you for joining us this morning. And before we start, you know that what we do is we bring down the walls with our mighty weapons. The weapons, here we go. These are the trumpets of God. This is the weapon that you're going to hear. This is the weapon. This are the shofars. These are the trumpets that the, the Word of God talks about. In the heavens you will hear the trumpets. These are it. Let's bring down these walls of depression, these walls of anxiety, these walls of racism, these walls of sickness, these walls of perversion, these walls of alcoholism, these walls of sickness and, and disease and everything else that the devil tries to throw. We're going to bring him down right now with the sound of the trumpet. Join me. If you have your shofars, let's blow our shofars in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Wow, that's powerful. That is simply powerful. When you blow those horns, I tell you what, there's something that that spirit moves in you. The spirit moves in you in a mighty way. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Oh, God is so good. I have a message today. And this message I really want, I really want you to really open up. I want you to pay attention. I want you to really open up. Let us pray. In the name above all names, Father, Yah, God, in the name of Yeshua, Amashiach, I pray right now that he who has ears, let him open their ears. Open your eyes. Open your mind. Open your heart. Let the soul receive this word that comes from the Holy Spirit from the Ruach. I pray right now that everyone listening, everyone seeing this program right now, let them open up and let them receive this powerful word, Father God, this word that comes from you, Father God. I pray right now that everyone right now, Father God, is ready, Father God, ready and the expectations are high. You're hungry and thirsty for the word in the name of Yeshua, Amashiach, our Messiah, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Well, welcome everybody. Welcome. I'm getting ready here to start because I'm excited about this word. I titled this today, We Are Israel. Are you? Amen. 
<laughs> Glory be to God. Well, I want to start out by saying that we just celebrated the last fall festival feast, the Feast of Tabernacles, also known as Sukkot. We celebrated and we had such a great and glorious time. We celebrated this with joy, with abundance, with love. People came in, different people from different areas. We had some people from other countries come in. Um, it was just a wonderful and glorious, glorious gathering. We celebrated these festivals because they're appointed by God. These are festivals, celebrations, feasts that are appointed by the Almighty. And we're obedient to his word. We're obedient to his word. Go with me to Leviticus chapter 23. I want to set the foundation, okay, of where we're going. I want you to come with me. Pens, pencils, markers, highlighters, Bibles, notepads, get them out. Let's learn today. Hallelujah. Leviticus chapter 23, we're in the Torah, verse 1. In some of your Bibles, it may say appointed fest festivals. Some others might say something else. But this is what the Bible says in Leviticus 23, verse 1. It says, the Lord said to Moshe, Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them. Speak to the Israelites and say to them. These are my appointed festivals, the appointed festivals of the Lord, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. Hmm. My, my, my. Speak to them and tell them, these are my festivals. And they are sacred assemblies. They're holy. They're holy. But then, right after that, huh? in the next paragraph, you see that he talks about the Sabbath. And he says, there are six days when you may work, but the seventh day is the day of Sabbath rest, a day of sacred assembly. You are not to do any work wherever you live. It is a Sabbath to the Lord. Okay? I just threw that in there because when he appointed these festivals, he talked about the Sabbath also because it is a celebration. And he called them both the sacred assembly. Right? So now... We celebrated this festival, and it was great. It was wonderful. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still high on, on it, you know. I'm still on the cloud because it was such a beautiful time. <clears throat> but, you know, some of the congregants there, some of the people that were there, you know, that, that have been going to the church, and, and, and including myself, you know, we've been asked, why are you celebrating a festival that's only for the Jews? Why are you celebrating this? That's, it only belo belongs to them doesn't belong to you well let's get into this word and let's see what god has to say about this okay come with me now culture is something we develop during a you know our course of our time right um and many of us have grown in uh, following cultures depending on what part of the planet you're from or you're raised right as one is brought up in the culture the norms of the culture are ingrained in how we think how we do things and can become easily a tradition because of our culture and our background. So what's the culture of the modern church today? What's accepted simply for the sake of tradition? Can we decipher truth in the midst of the culture that we are in? Hmm. With this in mind, in the New Testament, the Brit Hadashah, do you think that was the first time God provided Gentiles to be grafted into Israel? Many might say yes. But it is because of, is it because of tradition or truth? Few people understand that the church and Israel are the same thing. Many try to separate them as different entities. Some people believe that the New Testament church replaced Israel. They believe that God, Yahweh, did away with Israel and replaced it with the Gentile church of the New Testament. Interesting, right? But let's see what God says. Let's go to scriptures. Let's go to Exodus chapter 12. 
And let's look at verse 49. Excuse me. Exodus chapter 12, verse 49. The Bible says this. The same law applies both to the native born and to the foreigner, the alien, residing among you. The same Torah, which is the law, applies to both. Okay? Stay with me. So the law, the Torah, wasn't just for Israel. It was for anyone who followed God's law. God, Yahweh himself, allowed foreigners to be part of Israel. He also counted them the same as Israel, so to go and pursue the same law. There was no difference. Go with me to Numbers chapter 15. Hallelujah. We're just getting started here. Oh, glory be to God. Numbers chapter 15. Let's look at verse 15. Numbers 15, verse 15, this is what it says. The community is to have the same rules for you and for the foreigner residing among you. This is a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. You and the foreigner shall be the same before the Lord. Now, I'm going to ask you, blessed ones, are we a generation? Yes generations to come a lasting ordinance something that was going to go on for the rest of time hmm but we've read this in the new testament also right go with me to romans chapter 10 hallelujah oh this is exciting this is exciting so remember the first verses we started with right we started with talking about the appointed festivals and all these things but go with me to romans chapter 10 Verse 12. Romans 10, verse 12. This is what the Bible says. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blessed all who come, all who call on him. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Anyone who comes and abides in God's law. No difference. Now, as you can see, this was not a new concept. When they were talking about it in the New Testament, it was already said. It has been around for a long time. The scripture in the book of Numbers stated that you and the foreigner shall be the same before God. Okay? But I'm going to get a little deeper so you can understand it a little more. So again, I repeat myself. What was being taught in the New Testament was the same that was taught in the Old because they were teaching the Tanakh. They were teaching the Torah in the New Testament. Everything has already, was already written. Yeshua was rebuking and confronting from the first day he came. Jesus came in fighting. What was that culture? What was that culture then? The traditions and teachings of men that which was taught by the Pharisees and teachers of the Torah. That's what they were doing. Go with me to Mark. Go with me to Mark chapter 7. And let's look at verse 9. Mark chapter 7, verse 9. The Bible says this. And he continued... You, this is Jesus talking. You have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. Jesus is telling the Pharisees, you have a, this is what you do. You set aside the commandments of God to follow your own traditions. Now go down to verse 13. The Bible says this. It says, thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And you do many things like that. He's from the get-go, when Jesus got here, when the Yeshua started walking, this is it's all he, he's trying to get them back to the written Torah, to what was written. The ministry of the disciples begins really in the book of Acts. And we find traditions of the teachers that were still causing all these problems 
and confusions. Look at what Peter says. Go with me to Acts chapter 10, verse 28. Acts, Acts chapter 10, verse 28. Look at what he says. And he said to them, You are well aware that it is against the law for a Jew to associate or visit a Gentile. But God, Yah, has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. Hmm? This is after his vision and all these things that happened. You should read that. Where did this law come from? Nowhere will you find in the Torah where they were not to associate with a foreigner or a Gentile. You're not going to find it. Especially a God-fearing foreigner that was trying to pursue the ways of the, of the Lord, his laws. In fact, we find throughout the scriptures that non-Hebrews people joined and became part of Israel. Yes. Yes, they did. Do you all remember Ruth? What was she? She was a Moab. Okay? Go with me to Ruth chapter 1. Hallelujah. And let's look at verse 16. This is what Ruth said. Ruth chapter 1 verse 16 says this. Pay attention, she said. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Okay? She became part of Israel. Actually, Ruth and Rahab, remember Rahab, the prostitute from Jericho, who helped those two spies? But let me tell you something else. But not only did they become part of Israel, listen to what I'm going to say. They are listed in the lineage of Yeshua, Jesus our Savior. They're listed in the lineage. Go with me to Matthew chapter 1. Ooh, yes. Matthew chapter 1, and I want to look at verse 5. This is where it goes down the lineage, right? But let's start in chapter Matthew 1, verse 5. Look at verse 5. The Bible says, Salmon, Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed, the father of Jesse. You know who Jesse was, right? Father David and all that. But now go down to verse 16. I'm gonna, cause we're not going to go through all that. But look at verse 16. And Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, and Mary was the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Huh? A Moab and a prostitute right there on the lineage where our Messiah was born. Can I get an amen out there? Amen. Glory be to God. These women were grafted into Israel long before the New Testament ever happened. Come on now. Yahweh always provided for anyone who, choose, who chose him. The same blessings that are for natural Israel as being obedient to God's law is also afforded to those who were once Gentiles. Like us. We were once Gentiles. But the question is, what establishes people as God's children? How is this established? Is it being in the lineage of Abraham? No. Why? Because the Pharisees were in the lineage of Abraham. And they claimed God as their father. But what did Jesus tell them? Go with me to John chapter 8. And let's look at verse 39. John chapter 8, verse 39. Hallelujah. This is what the Bible says. Abraham, this is what the Pharisees were telling 
okay they, they were they were they were telling jesus right and they say abraham is our father they answered and what did he say if you were abraham's children this is jesus then you would do what abraham did huh now go down to verse 44 now this is where it gets heavy duty okay because these guys are claiming that they're part of this lineage which they were but look at what jesus says verse 44 you belong to your father the devil wow and you want to carry out your father's desires he was a murderer from the beginning not holding to the truth for there is no truth in him when he lies he speaks his native language for he is a liar and father of lies so if he's calling them that they're their father then you are liars too because your father is a liar so you're a liar there's no confusion here but they were saying hey hey wait a minute uh, abraham's my father which in the blood the lineage the, the he was but let me tell you that's not what god wants that's not what he means about being part of israel but look at what shaul says in romans go with me to romans chapter 9 hallelujah verse 6 romans chapter 9 verse 6 the bible says this but it is not as though the word of god has failed for not all who are descended from israel belong to israel i let that sink in a little bit meaning that just because you are from the physical seed of abraham doesn't make you part of israel it's always been this way. We find that living in the faith and obedience of Abraham makes one child of Abraham. If you live in the faith and you follow in obedience, then you are a child of Abraham. Remember what Yeshua, Jesus said in John, the scripture we read earlier. He said, if you were Abraham's children, then you would do as Abraham did. Because you're not doing it, you are the sons of the devil. I didn't say that, blessed ones. The Bible says that. We are to have faith in the word of God. If the seed of the word is truly in us, it can only produce the fruit, the same fruit that was produced in Jesus, Yeshua. Obedience to the Torah. Obedience to the word. Obedience to the law. The same seed, that the word that was in Yeshua is the same seed, the word that should be in us by our faith. The proof of, the, of that seed being alive in us is the fruit we produce. Obedience to the law. Obedience to the Torah. I'm going to say that because that's what the Bible says. Abraham was the father of faith. But remember, it's not only by faith alone. Look at what James said. Go with me to James chapter 2. And let's look at verse 24. James chapter 2 verse 24 says, that's what the Bible says, you see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. Faith is a big thing. You have to have faith, but you have to work it. Faith without works is dead. Because Abraham didn't only have faith, he walked in it. Meaning he did the works also. So it's faith and obedience, obedience to God's law and not man's traditions is the result and proof of our faith. It's always been this way. Faith is the root and obedience is the fruit. I'm going to say that one more time. Faith is the root and obedience is the fruit it's, it's the way it is yeshua said that he did not come to abolish the law but to fulfill it right the torah gives the instructions on how he wants us his people to live when one chooses to walk in the ways of god he leaves the nations and becomes part of israel the one body, the one holy nation, the one law and how we are to live our lives. Blessed ones, listen to what I'm telling you. Time is coming 
where you're either you're either an is in Israel or you're not. You're either part or you're not. In faith, we are no longer Gentiles. Gentiles by natural birth, yes, but no longer Gentiles in the eyes of God. That's who we are. We're to follow Jesus example in obedience to the law. We establish ourselves as his children in our faith. Then through our obedience of that faith, we prove we are his children. We do what he tells us. Thus, this is why we celebrate his festivals. This is why we do, we honor the Sabbath. This is why we do things because we're following everything he told us to. Galatians chapter 3. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Mm. Galatians chapter 3. Let's look at verse 7. Galatians chapter 3 verse 7. This is what the Bible says. Understand then that those who believe are children of Abraham. It's all about having the faith of Abraham. And if you do, you will walk like Abraham also. That is what Yeshua told the Pharisees. Right? That's what he told him. If you were Abraham's children, you would do what Abraham did. Those who walk in that faith are considered fellow citizens of Israel. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Ephesians chapter 2. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 2. Let's look at verse 19. Hallelujah. Look at what the Bible says. The word of God says this, consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. Hallelujah. That's who we are. That being said, making us part of Israel, just like Ruth and Rahab, just like them. We are part of Israel. We are Israel. In scripture, Gentiles means of the nations it always has meant that we are called to come out of the nations plural and into his holy set apart nation singular it's truly that simple come out from the nations plural and be part of his nation singular you understand that go with me to first peter chapter 2 Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. First Peter chapter 2. Let's look at verse 9. First Peter chapter 2 in verse 9, the Bible says this. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, singular. His own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood in his holy nation. Huh? This is in the Brit Hadashah. This is in the New Testament. But where else is it written? Well, let's go to the Torah. Exodus 19. Go with me to Exodus 19. Hallelujah. Mm. And let's look at verse 6. Exodus 19, verse 6. The Bible says this. And ye shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Nothing has changed, blessed ones. Nothing has changed. The New Testament is only giving us what was already established in the Torah and the Old Testament. I keep saying that because that's what's written. God gave us this to understand it. As we read, we see this. Amen? Now go with me to Ephesians chapter 2. And let's look at verse 19. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. You know, 
I give you a lot of scriptures because I want you to study. I want you to go in there. Just don't believe me. Go in there. Do your due diligence. Study for yourself. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 19. The Bible says this. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also, also members of his household. We read that, right? We're also members of his household. It's like the mixed multitude, remember that, that came out of Egypt. Okay, there were Egyptians, there were foreigners, there were natural born Hebrews that all left Egypt. They became, they became collectively referred to as Israel. Did you know that? Now, there was, not only the Hebrews came out of there, there was the Egyptians, there was foreigners, there were all kinds of different people, all mixed together, but they were collectively referred to as Israel. Exodus chapter 14, verse 19. I want you to really pay attention to this scripture. Exodus chapter 14, let's start in verse 19. And you all remember this story. The Bible says this, Exodus 14, 19, it says, Then the angel of God who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them, the pillar of cloud also moved from the front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt, Pharaoh, and Israel. Who were, who were in, this, in this crowd? Egyptians, Hebrews, foreigners. But they called, called them Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to one side and light to the other side. So neither went near other the other all night the protection protecting israel protecting his children protecting his royal priesthood but we know that it was a mixture of people but they were following god it was later when they became corrupt and stuff but at that time see we are all one nation one body this is why he says when he comes he's going to come for his bride Colossians 3, verse 15. We are one body, one nation. Colossians 3, verse 15 says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. See, we're not different bodies and all that what people try to tell you god is coming from one body now you may be part of another body and that's not a good thing because what you want to be is you want to be in the body of christ you want to be in that body that he's going to come in amen ephesians 3 and let's look at verse 6 Ephesians 3, verse 6. This is what the Bible says. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel. Members together of one body. And sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. We're heirs. We're in one body we share the same promises because we're one. Now go to the next chapter, Ephesians chapter 4. And let's start in verse 4. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4. The Bible says this, There is one body and one spirit just as you were called to one hope when you were called one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all in all. One God that's over all, one body. But the question is, do you belong to this body? Hmm. Believing Israel is the church and Gentiles are grafted in Nothing has changed. This is what all the scriptures teach. One body, not two, not three. One body. Amen? One body. One God. 
Isaiah 56, 3. Excuse me. Isaiah chapter 56. Let's look at verse 3. Look at, look at what it says here. It says here, the Bible says, Do not let the foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord say, The Lord will most certainly separate me from his people. He's saying, do not let them say that. Do not let them say that they're going to be separated. This is, what so, this is what so many people have tried to do from the beginning. They have tried to separate people. They have tried to be separated from Israel. They have tried. But the fact is, you are either part of Israel or you're not his. It's simple. You're either part of Israel or you're not his. That's what he said. Blessed ones, it wasn't called the church in the Old Testament. It was called in Hebrew, kahal. It means assembly. In fact, as we have studied before, the word interpreted as church in Greek is ecclesia. Remember that? Ecclesia. The Spanish churches are iglesia, ecclesia, but it means church. Ecclesia actually means congregation or assembly. That's what it means. You know, it doesn't mean church. It means an assembly. It means a congregation. Remember when we read earlier? Huh? A sacred assembly. Woo. Glory be to God. It's perfectly parallels with the Old Testament. It parallels with the Torah. It par parallels with the Tanakh. We know that the apostles considered the assembly as a church. Many have said Israel is not the church and the church is not Israel. But if you examine the scriptures in the Tanakh, in the Old Testament, you will see that Israel is referred to as the church in the New Testament. Stephen, remember Stephen? Speaks to this fact when he defends himself to false accusations to not teaching or practicing the laws of Moses, the Torah. Huh? The accusations came from the Pharisees and the scribes telling him that, you know, hey, he's not teaching this. Listen to what Stephen says, referring to Moshe, to Moses. Go with me to Acts. Go with me to the book of Acts. And let's look at verse 7, I mean chapter 7, Acts chapter 7, and go with me to verse 38. Acts chapter 7, verse 38. Look at what the Bible says. Hallelujah. This is what Stephen says, okay? okay. This is the man who was in the assembly, kahal, congregation. Some of you might have congregation. Some of your Bibles may say church, but it's an assembly in the wilderness. He says, this is the man who was in the assembly in the wilderness, accompanied by the angel that has spoken to him at Mount Sinai and by the, our fathers, the man who was given living words to pass on to us. See, here Stephen refers to Israel in the wilderness as the Ecclesia, the church in Greek. Stephen was a Jewish believer, meaning he was from the tribe of Judah. But he understood the Greek customs and called Israel the church, the Ecclesia. Even though, even though it was contrary to the scripture, it spread and became known as dispensationalism, a religious interpretive system. Listen to what I'm saying. If believers today call could if believers today could see that there is no difference between the Tanakh and the New Testament terminology, really, then we would truly understand we are called to be grafted into Israel. We are called to walk in the faith and the obedience of Abraham. If we understood that, but people don't want to hear it. People don't want to hear it. They don't want to listen to it. I'm comfortable. I love the traditions. I love my God. But then we must understand physical Israel and spiritual Israel. Hmm. Go with me to Romans chapter 11. Verse 23. Look at what the Bible says. Romans chapter 11 verse 23. It says this. And if they do not persist in unbelief, they will be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. Ooh. So if you 
do not continue in your unbelief, if you do not continue in your pagan worship, if you do not continue in your traditional ways, then you can come in. God will take you and bring you in again. That's what he's saying. The text shows that they were cut because of what? Unbelief. Because he's telling you, if they do not pers pursue this or persist in their unbelief, I will bring him in. The question is, are they still Israel? In the physical, they are. But in the spiritual Israel, as was intended from the beginning, but not as the spiritual Israel that was intended in the beginning. Physically, they are, but not spiritual the way it was intended in the beginning. It's like the days in the first generation of Moses. Remember those? Go with me to Hebrews chapter 3. And let's start in verse 14. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 14 says this. We have come to share in Christ. Listen, listen very carefully, blessed ones. Please listen to this. We have come to share in Christ. If indeed we hold our original conviction firmly to the very end. As has just been said today. If you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Who were they who heard and rebelled? Were they not all of those Moses led out of Egypt? And with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not those who sinned? Those bodies perished in the wilderness? And to whom did God swear that they would never enter his rest if not to those who disobeyed? So we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. Now, blessed ones, I want to really, I want to, I want to warn you. I just want to tell you this with love. We're in the wilderness right now. Who's going to enter into his rest and who's going to stay out? This scripture is telling us that they rebelled by not believing. In other words, unbelief. What were they not believing? The Torah. Go to the next chapter, Hebrews 4. And let's start in verse 1. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Look at what it says. Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the good news, the gospel, proclaimed to us just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. Blessed ones, read it carefully. Read what this is saying. Faith in the Father is the same as it's always been. The Father doesn't change. Everybody says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But those people that say that don't even think that. They think that he changed during the course of Jesus' coming. Though you may have been physically born as part of the nations of Gentiles, if you, cho if you chose to walk after his ways, you are now a spiritual Israelite. You are Israel in his eyes and no longer a part of the Gentiles, the nations. You are part of his holy nation. You are a... Israel light you are Israel you are grafted into the cultivated olive tree you are now a citizen of the true nation of Israel regardless of what culture you're in you have chosen to pursue his ways you're an Israelite and no longer of the Gentile nations I want to say that over believe that blessed ones for as long as we have been taught, and many of you will understand this, and told that we do not have the same instructions as, as Israelites because we're Gentiles. That's what the churches teach. Oh, no, 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 that's for them. Oh, no, no. Oh, 
breaking that 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 tor that sabbath that shabbat you that's for them it's not for you my god you know we have been taught that for over a long time but now that we know we are not gentiles but grafted into israel his children we should do what israel is commanded to do practice and obey all his eternal word the torah from the front of the book to the back of the book don't give yourself just that section it's everything he said this is the very foundation of who we are and we need to understand this you need to know who you are as we read earlier in romans 10 it says for there is no difference between a jew and a gentile the same lord is lord of all and richly blessed all who call on him everyone who calls on the name of the lord will be saved we read that earlier and we read numbers 15 where it says the community is to have the same rules for you and for the foreigner residing among you this is the lasting ordinance this is the ordinance that continues from generation to generation to generation you and the foreigner shall be the same to the lord You are the same. You are Israel. If you're following everything that he tells you, you are Israel. Don't let nobody tell you any different. You are according to his word. Not according to their words. According to his word. Now, I've been told this and maybe, maybe many of you have. I've heard this from so many people. In fact, when I... When I got into the Messianic movement to follow the Torah and to follow all the, this is one of the first, I, get, I, I would say, conversations I had <laughs> with somebody. I've heard this by many people. It says, many people say that God's laws and commandments are too far to reach. They're just too much. You've heard that? Also, that God's ordained covenant of Levitical law is too much for mankind because we don't have what it takes to meet God's desired results. When you talk to people about the commandments and statutes, oh, <laughs> come on, you kidding me? You're gonna, you can't follow all that, man. You can't meet all that. Blessed ones, that is so far from the truth. That is so far. Oh, talk about the de deceiving liar. Go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Let's look at verse 11. Look at what the Bible says. The Torah. It says, now what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. Now what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. This is totally contrary to what people say. Think about it. Now put on that mind. How could God judge his people in the Old Testament for not keeping his Torah if they never had the ability to keep it in the first place. Does that sound like a loving God? Would he give them something they could not follow, then punish them for it? Does that make sense? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So God has given us the ability to follow. He said, it's not beyond our reach. You think that God would give us this and then say, oh, you're not going to make it. I'm going to, come on, wake up. Deuteronomy chapter 32. And let's start in verse 45. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 45. This is what the Bible says. When Moshe, Moses, finished reciting all these words to all Israel, he said to them, Take to heart all the words I have solemnly declared to you this day, so that you may command your children to obey carefully all the words of the 
law, the Torah. They are not just idle words for you. They are your life. By them, you will live long in the land you are crossing to the Jordan to possess. These are your life, the law, the words. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Why would he say this to them and then us? No, nah, this, this, this is not for you. A lie from the pit, a lie from the devil. They are not just idle words, blessed ones. They are your life. They are your life. Our life. But it's sad to say they have become idle words in today's modern church. It's sad that these words of God, this Torah, these laws have become just idle words in today's modern church. They are no longer the life in the churches today. They, they're not. And I, you know that I'm not telling you anything you don't know. They have tossed them aside even though they were the very life of Jesus, Yeshua himself, who was supposed to be our example, not our excuse. They have tossed him aside. These powerful words, this law that has made the power of God, Israel, Israel, Jesus is supposed to be our example, not our excuse. Many people use Yeshua as their excuse, not the example. They don't want to follow him. They don't want to follow him all the way. Just little ways. I'll go this far. That's it. Because why? Because my pastor is more smarter than you, Lord. Woo, I'm sorry. But that's true. That's the honest truth. Blessed ones, brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors. When I started, I told you we had just celebrated God's appointed festival, celebration, because we are obedient to his every word. The Lord said to Moshe, speak to the Israelites and say to them, these are my appointed festivals. The appointed festivals of the Lord, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. Sabbaths, rest. This is why we were celebrating what we celebrated. Because we are Israel. We follow all the word from the front of the book to the back of the book. Every single word that God wrote, we follow it. Because that's what God told us to do. Never did he say, leave the front, park it, put it in the garage. Never did he say that. He said, these are my words from even Revelation when he said, if you followed all my commandments, you can come in. Just like Moses took the people out of Egypt from slavery and many perished in the wilderness for being disobedient to God's law, to his Torah. Jesus, Yeshua, came to show us a way out of bondage, slavery from sin. But as you can see, blessed ones, many will be also perishing. Many will also perish because of the disobedience to God's Torah. It remains the same. God hasn't changed it. He's the same today and forever. He wrote it then. He carries it on. Everybody that came, that's what they were teaching. I pray you who are listening will not be one of those people who perish in this wilderness. I pray that you will start researching the Word of God and ask the Ruach HaKadosh, ask the Holy Spirit to teach you, to guide you, 
and remind you of all Yeshua taught, which was the Torah. We are Israel. Are you? Let us pray. Father God, in the name above all names, in the name of Yeshua, Amashiach, our Messiah, our Christ, our Savior, I pray that every word, every word that was spoken, Father God, penetrated the soul, the mind, the heart. Father God, I pray that these words will be taken in seriousness and will be embraced, Father God, so that they can understand, Father God, that we are one body. We are one for you. We are one body, Father God. I pray that they will start looking at your words, Father God, and start researching and start just having that conversation, Father God. I pray that these words will go deep in the bone, in the marrow of the bone, everywhere, mine, everywhere, Father God. This is a word that's still alive from the beginning of time to the end. Father God, I pray for everyone that's listening right now. I pray, Father God, that you will open up their minds to receive, Father God, and to continue on this road. Father God, for you have said, Father God, that you have come to give us life, life in abundance, a clear way to your path, Father God, to enter into that narrow gate. Father God, I pray right now for all the people and their relatives, all the people that are listening. Father God, if there's somebody out there, Father God, that doesn't know you, let him get to know you, Father God, in the name above all names. Father God, I pray, if you're listening right now, and you're, you don't know if you're saved or not, let me repeat this after me. Father, Jesus, I come as a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. I repent for what I have done. I believe that you died and rose again. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Father God, I pray, Father God, if anybody out there just said those words, welcome. We are Israel, and I thank you. Bless you all. Amen. I'm going to give you the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his light upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom.